Greetings, salutations, and hello there, YouTube. It's me, James, your BA Sensei. And today we're going to be doing a Power BI DAX tutorial. And we're going to be doing a simple moving average. Simple moving average. What is a simple moving average and what is the context? Well, if you're in the investment world, you know that a simple moving average is a way of smoothing out your daily stock fluctuations, price and spot trends over a longer period of time. So we're going to be looking at some stock prices. The stock price we're going to be looking at is Apple, GameStop, Microsoft and Tesla, as you can see it over there. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply uh, various moving averages um, to that to those stocks. So if we look at Apple, for instance, let's say we're going to apply a 300 day moving average. You can see the moving average there. The longer the period, the smoother the graph, the line graph. So basically, if we do a very sh a short period of 61 days, you can see it's a little bit closer to the actual daily stock price fluctuation. So now, how are we going to implement this in Power BI? I'm going to show you. All right, before we go on, let's quickly look at the data set. So we have a data set. We have four stocks. You can see a stock code, stock name, and the full name. And then the stock quotes contains the stock code, the dates of the stock quote, and the last price this is the one we're going to be looking at, the trading volumes, the open, high, and lows for each of those days. We're going to be using this column. So in the video link below, you'll find a link to the raw data and to this Power BI file. <clears throat> let's quickly look at the data model. Data model, stock quotes, link up to the stock code types. Very simple. Let's first plot our daily stock prices on a line chart. So we just drag in a line chart and we're going to say we're going to use the close and last. I'm going to create a new measure. Calculate sum and we're going to take the stock quotes and we're going to take the last price. That's the price we're going to have the closing price at the end of each day. Closing stock price. There we go. Brilliant. We have the closing stock price. So let's quickly pull the X axis and the closing stock price would be on the Y axis. Let's make that just that. So here you see the stock price of Apple, GameStop, Microsoft and Tesla. A new measure. Do a new measure. All right. Let's do a 30 day moving average. So let's say we're going to start with the average X to get the average and then we are going to use a function called dates between. So what does dates between do? Dates between returns a set of dates between two given dates. So we're going to give it the period that we want to check. So we're going to say, what is the date table here? We're just going to say it's stock quotes and the date field currently is date. Cool. What is our start date? <clears throat> so where will we start counting? So we'll say take the max of the stock quote date. Yes. And if you want to do a 30 day, we will say minus 29. Yes, just to include one day. So 30 days would be minus 29. And then we can say max, the end date would be the max of the stock quotes date. All right, simple, simple as that. The first part, we close that one off. And then what we're going to add is we're going to say calculate. What is the expression we're going to calculate? Calculate the sum, yes, of stock quotes. And we're going to be looking at the close and last date. And we close that one up, close that one up, close that one up. And we're going to call it moving average. We say, OK, cool. Now that we have the 30 day moving average, just click over here and we drag it in over there. And now you can see it's a little bit smoother than the daily stock price. You can see it's a little bit smoother. It's a little bit smoother. If we look at GameStop, a little bit smoother. So the longer the period, let's make that 60 days, start a new measure, and we make that, add that to the graph. You can see the longer the period, the smoother. So, let's so a cool thing I want to do is like, I don't want to hard code any of these things. What I want to do is I want to actually let the user create the moving average perimeter and then you can determine what moving average date you want. I don't want to create a measure for each of that. So how do I go about that? All of these just have that in there. Uh, we need to create um, a new perimeter. We're going to say numeric range. Numeric range would be years. 
It's a whole number, yes. And we're going to start at 1. And let's say we want to go up to 500. Increment of 1. We say add slicer to the page. Cool. There we go. It's going to shape it so it fits in there. There we go. So now we have the moving average days. I'm just going to grab, let's say, the 90 days one over here. I'm just going to copy it, paste it, say stock quotes, say new measure, paste it in there. So we're going to make some changes here. We're going to say the user moving average, 89 days. What we're going to do is we're going to make that dynamic based on that new table that we added. So we're going to say, what's that new table called that we created? We call it moving average days, moving average days, days value. Yes. And it's going to be minus one. Remember, that's the one day we need to include there. And that should do the trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag user moving average in there. Cool. So currently it's at one. If I move it up to 157, 331, 111. So this is quite cool. So now you, you have like a very simple moving average that your user has defined and you can see the trends. Hope this helped you. This really came in handy for me. Thank you very much, guys. BA Sensei out.